My name is David Ulrich. I live uh, here in the city of Chicago, not too far from the shores of Lake Michigan, and work very close to the Chicago River, so water is very much a part of my life. Excellent. And what is the source of drinking water for your home? Well, the drinking water for my home comes from uh, beautiful Lake Michigan. There's one of several cribs out in the lake, and it gets run through the Jardine uh, drinking water treatment facility and through pipes and comes into my house through the faucet. Excellent. And does your workplace or school or your children's school have the same uh, 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 draw from the same water source? Uh, yes, my workplace draws from Lake Michigan as well. And my son is no longer in school, but when he was at school here in Chicago, he got his water from Lake Michigan as well. Excellent. And um, approximately how many people receive water from, in the Chicago area, receive water from? From, from Lake Michigan, I think close to uh, five or six million people get water from Lake Michigan, served by the water, the Chicago water system. There are a few more, I believe, to the north who get water from Lake Michigan as well. I believe uh, Waukegan and Highland Park have their own systems, possibly Evanston. Maybe altogether seven million people. I'm not 100% sure of that, but a lot of people get their water from Lake Michigan. Great. And what are the greatest risks as you see them? What are the greatest risks to um, your water system? Probably the greatest risk to water systems are the service lines between the water mains that run under the streets and are managed by the City of Chicago Department of Water uh, and come into our houses. There are still quite a few uh, older homes in particular that have lead service lines and the potential for contamination there is of the greatest concern, although uh, the city has additives in the water uh, that minimize uh, that risk. So that is the number one risk. Probably the second largest risk is from combined sewer overflows during major rainfall events, which have become worse during climate change and result in partially or untreated sewage finding its way to Lake Michigan. Normally it flows in the other direction, but sometimes it goes out to Lake Michigan. And that's probably the second largest source. Uh, third would be some potential industrial contamination uh, from Northwest Indiana where the uh, industries still discharge pollution uh, to Lake Michigan. There was uh, recently a release of hexavalent chrome from uh, the U.S. Steel facility down there that had many drinking water sources uh, that uh, were potentially affected by it. There's also some uh, deposition from the air uh, that comes into the lake and affects uh, the water. Uh, mercury is the primary concern from there. So those are the, the major concerns about potential contamination of the drinking water. Great. And um, you mentioned a couple places already. Um, you know, we're, we're asking people to think about what neighborhood or community are these risks most acute and who is most affected? And well, the neighborhoods and communities that are potentially most affected uh, tend to be the older and often uh, lower income and minority communities. Uh, where these lead service lines would still most likely be in place. Uh, in addition to that, uh, I think that those communities also tend to be vulnerable to climate change effects. They might be in lower lying areas, uh, vulnerable to flooding, and uh, flooding waters uh, can wind up contaminating drinking water systems and direct exposure to it as well. So that's probably where the greatest potential effects are, at least in the Chicago area and in other areas around the Great Lakes. Great. Um, and who is your, who in this community, who in your community is working on these risks? Um, what are they doing and how? I, I also, I'm gonna have you reintroduce yourself because 
you obviously work on water and are very knowledgeable about these <laughs> <laughs> events, but um, I'll start out by saying who, is your, who, who in your community is working on these risks and what are they doing and, and how can everyday people help? In my community, uh, which I consider the Great Lakes community, uh, first of all, I have been working on protecting water for 44 years now, uh, 30 years with the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, and now 14 years with an organization called the Great Lakes and St. Lawrence Cities Initiative. And that is a group of 130 U.S. and Canadian mayors who advocate for the protection and restoration and long-term sustainability of the Great Lakes and St. Lawrence and providing clean, fresh, safe drinking water is one of their primary concerns. So in my broader Great Lakes St. Lawrence community, uh, these are uh, the people who I look to and work with on a daily basis on protecting uh, the water. Now in the more immediate uh, community, uh, obviously uh, Mayor Emanuel, as mayor of our city who uh, has control over the drinking water system here, the Department of Water Management, and the leadership in that organization are the people who are working on it. There are many wonderful environmental organizations as well. The Alliance for the Great Lakes is doing a great deal of good work. Friends of the Chicago River are real protectors of the uh, waters here. Even though they don't directly protect the source of drinking water, uh, they are doing a great deal. Uh, the Sierra Club, Environmental Law and Policy Center, Natural Resources Defense Council, all of these are part of my community who are working on uh, protecting the water. Great. Um, I did want to um, talk a little bit about the path of water. Um, I think you maybe have answered these, but I'm just going to go through them. Fine. Anyway, who, who runs the pipes that convey the water? Uh, the uh, Department of Water and Sewers uh, uh, here uh, control the pipes. So uh, those are the, you know, they are the uh, local authority that are responsible for uh, making sure that those pipes are in good shape and clean and uh, get the water uh, to the service lines that bring it to our houses. Uh, the, the pipes, you know, I'm not 100% sure of what the pipes are made of. I, I, uh, I think that they are uh, steel, but I think some of the newer ones uh, might be uh, uh, PVC, polyvinyl chloride. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, that's a very good question. I, uh, I'm not 100% sure of the answer of what those pipes are made of. Okay. And what would you, uh, having worked on water issues for 44 years, if someone is just uh, starting to realize how important our water system is and the threats um, to our water system, how does someone, what would be your advice to someone um, to start um, being an active participant in, and, and what steps can they take to well, the things I would recommend to people for getting involved in water protection uh, would be, number one, to first of all study and learn about water. Uh, you know, what's it made of and what is it? It's much more than just H2O. Uh, it is uh, got a lot of other things in it as well. And uh, whether it's in grade school, high school, or college, or uh, beyond that in graduate school, learning it about it is, uh, number one, very important. Number two is to have experiences uh, with the water. Get directly involved. Uh, get your hands and feet wet in the water and uh, learn how uh, important it really is. Thirdly, I would say uh, get involved with um, volunteer organizations who are cleaning up rivers or beaches or whatever. And then fourth, put together a good resume and apply to government, non-government organizations, corporations, whatever, uh, to uh, try to 
find a job in protecting the water. That's kind of what I did and uh, it worked and 44 years later I'm still doing it. That's great. And on that note I'll have you reintroduce yourself. What's your name? Uh, where do you live and, and what's, what, what do you do? Uh, my name is David Ulrich. I live in the Lakeview neighborhood of Chicago and I am currently the executive director of the Great Lakes and St. Lawrence Cities Initiative group of 130 U.S. and Canadian cities representing over 17 million people who advocate and work on protecting, restoring, and ensuring the long-term sustainability of the Great Lakes and St. Lawrence, one of the greatest uh, sources of surface fresh water in the world. Prior to that, I worked for 30 years with the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, started out as a water enforcement attorney, but worked in air pollution, hazardous waste, and senior management positions as well uh, over a 30-year period. Great. And what are the biggest barriers that you encounter um, doing the work that you do? Uh, I think the biggest barriers in our work is that people take fresh water for granted in this country and particularly in this area of the country that we are in. We have uh, such an abundant supply of surface fresh water and groundwater, although there are some places where it is more limited, uh, people just assume it will always be there. If you ask them where does the water come from, they'll say, well, the faucet, of course. And they don't really know uh, that it might come from groundwater, might come from surface water. So, I think awareness of uh, where water comes from, the importance of water, and then educating oneself about the threats to water and getting involved in making sure that the water is protected uh, is very, very important. Great. Thank okay? Thank you so much. Fantastic. Okay, good.